A few months ago, I checked out this, which is essentially a pre-production version of this thing, the Razer Viper 8K Hertz. This is the first production 8000 Hertz device, at least that I know of, and the, the video that I did on this one explains a lot about 8000 Hertz in general, why you might, or why you should care about it at all, and uh, some of the, the benefits and other technologies that are in this, and therefore in this, that you should probably know about as well. Now that video will be linked in the cards up above, but as for this video, well I get to show you around this one, the, the production version, the one you can go and buy, and well, talk you through if you should actually go and buy one or not. Of course, first, if you haven't already, consider subscribing for more videos like this one every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Now the main draw of these mice is rather obvious, in fact it's literally in the name. 8,000 Hertz. But what does that actually mean? What is a, a polling rate? Well, like I said, I explained a lot more in the first video about this, so check that one out. But to oversimplify greatly, uh, long story short, your PC uh, effectively asks uh, all of the peripherals at a given frequency, a given number of times per second, uh, for an update on if they've had any clicks, or on a keyboard's case, keystrokes, and in a mouse's case, both you know, button clicks, and in terms of the positional data for where the cursor should be. On most normal gaming mice, the maximum that, that will be able to be set to is 1000 hertz, or once every one millisecond. But with these, you can set it to 8000 or once every 0.125 milliseconds or 125 microseconds. For regular mice with the 1000 hertz polling rates, when you click one of the buttons, say left click to fire your gun in game, what happens there is that you get a delay of anywhere between 2 and 10 milliseconds because the polling rate is relatively slow and as I'll explain later, the switches also are a little bit on the slow side as well. So what happens is, like I said, you get that added level of input lag, whereas on these, well, even if it takes two cycles to register a click, it's still only taking 0.25 milliseconds to register that click, which is two to 10 milliseconds faster than anyone else on that server. The same thing happens with mouse movement as well, where with a standard 1000 Hz mouse, the computer is getting updated once every millisecond where you've moved the mouse to. But with these 8000 Hz ones, it's getting that update eight times more often, and so when it finally comes to actually picking where your mouse is to refresh the screen, it will be slightly more accurate as to where your mouse was well, about 30 or so milliseconds ago, since that's roughly how long your total system input lag, as I've tested a number of different times in a number of different videos, including with NVIDIA's Reflex, so go check that one out in the cards as well. The thing is, it's all well and good having an 8000 Hz polling rate, but if you don't upgrade the sensor and especially the switches, you're not going to see much benefit. Happily, Razer has done the, the necessary upgrades, and they're offering the sensor in this is the Razer Focus Plus, which they created in collaboration with Pixar, and offers up to 20,000 DPI. Let's face it, no one's going to use it up there. Uh, what's more interesting is the 650 inches per second uh, measurement, where you can move up to 650 inches in a second, uh, and it still will track uh, your movement accurately, which is kind of insane. And it also offers adjustable uh, liftoff distance between one and three millimeters and a supposed 99.6% resolution accuracy. And then there's the switches. These are Razer second generation optical switches, which I explained more about them in the first video, but long story short, instead of using a physical piece of metal that contacts and, and creates a circuit, they use a beam of light that gets interrupted by the, the moving part of the switch, and so you don't have any delay or debouncing delay necessary, so the switch which can actuate instantly. What that means is that with a standard mouse switch, like I said, it can take anywhere between two and 10 milliseconds, mostly thanks to that debouncing delay as the piece of metal springs back and forth and finally comes to a rest. Whereas with these, it happens 
literally, it's you're intersecting a beam of light, it happens instantly, and so these can actuate in the full 100, uh, 125 microseconds, or depending on timing, it might be more like 250 microseconds, but still, that's a hell of a lot faster than anyone else. But that's the thing, all of these shiny new features are only really a benefit to the legitimate pros who play games like CSGO actually professionally in tournaments and competitions, because for the average idiot like me, who, as if you've watched any of my videos, you will know I'm absolutely terrible at CSGO, and even games that I'm not quite as terrible at, something like COD Modern Warfare, I'm still not going to really see a benefit using this over a standard Viper. And that's kind of the thing. That's all this really is, a fancier, slightly upgraded version of the standard Razer Viper. And honestly, it's a pretty nice mouse. It's a fairly large sort of palm grip style mouse. It's just sort of long and flat enough that if you did want to sort of hybrid grip it, that's not, you know, impossible. Uh, but for my reasonably large hands, it fits me pretty well. It's relatively comfortable. Like I said, it's a little on the low side for me personally. And so my Razor Naga Trinity is a, a little more comfortable for me, especially longer term, but the insanely lightweight, which at least for me anyway, is 71 grams, means that for flicking this around and for general sort of control in games, this felt really good. It's also an ambidextrous style where uh, it does actually have buttons on both sides. Unfortunately for, for me though, the way that this, the extra buttons on the sort of, what is far side, don't really work very well for me being able to actuate them, which is a shame because I definitely always appreciate having a few extra buttons on my mouse, but overall, a very good feel to it. Both sides are covered in this sort of slightly rubber uh, grip tape type thing. It's a textured feel, which actually make it really easy to, to lift off and to flick around. Uh, very easy to hold onto, which is a good thing because like I said, the, the lightweight means that I was actually flicking this around like mad, uh, running a relatively low DPI. Um, and so, like I said, the experience was pretty decent. In fact, in general, my playing experience with it was really positive. I didn't experience any sort of compatibility or stuttering issues like others have reported. It was incredibly smooth no matter what game I played with it, even at the full 8000 hertz. Although in Razer software, you can set it back down to 1000 hertz if you did happen to have any compatibility issues in the, w with whatever game you're playing. With that said, when playing, I, I don't know whether it's placebo or not, but I did feel ever so slightly more accurate and I definitely felt ever so slightly faster on the trigger with it. Again, it could very well be placebo, but the, the fact stands that this should have a reduction in input lag over a standard 1000 hertz mouse, and so that, that added just slightly faster time between me clicking and seeing the gun fire on screen did have a, a slight impact in my well, playing experience for the better. In terms of my accuracy with it, it did feel I did feel like it improved, although as you probably know, that's a fairly low bar to, to improve from, and so it could just be the fact that I've been playing it a little bit more, uh, but it did feel very good. I, I enjoyed playing with it regardless of the 8000 hertz, and the fact that it does have 8000 hertz was kind of just a, a nice cherry on top of the pretty decent mouse experience at least for me anyway. While I can't say that this is going to be making its way onto my desk personally, I, I prefer the Razer Naga Trinity's comfort and extra buttons just a, a little too much, overall this does get a solid recommendation from me. It's definitely on the more expensive side of things, about £80 or dollars, which is definitely dear compared to some of the other sort of lightweight, high performance gaming meister on the market, but for the right person, I can see this being worth it. And that's the thing, if you're the right person. For the vast majority of people, you don't need this. It's a cool toy for sure, but does the slight competitive advantage that this offers outweigh getting a mouse that is more comfortable, fit for your hand, maybe lighter weight, better for your playstyle? No, it definitely doesn't. Getting a mouse that is fit for you is way more important than being able to click on heads one or two milliseconds faster than someone else, because if you can't line up the shot in the first place, it doesn't really matter. Yes, this is a very nice, very cool toy, but like I said, for the vast majority of people, you don't absolutely need to have this, and so let's just say it doesn't need to be next day delivered. Now with that said, those are my thoughts, and I would love to hear yours in the comments down below. 
What do you think about Razer using 8000 Hz in their mice? Does it make sense for you or maybe some of you know, or is it more just you know going to be resigned to the, the eSports Pro realm and for the, I suppose, eSports Pro wannabes who will get all of the stuff that the eSports Pro is actually use? I would very much be interested to hear your thoughts in those comments down below. And if you want to check out the Razer Viper 8K Hertz, then I'm going to leave a link to it in the description down below. That will be an Amazon affiliate link that will take you to your local Amazon store. We can see pricing when and when you watch this because it can and does vary. And the pricing I've quoted here is, like I said, the pricing as I film this and it can change. So feel free to take a look at that link. And otherwise, if I haven't plugged it enough, do go check out the video on the prototype version of this where I explain a lot more about the 8000 Hertz polling rate and why you'd want it, the, the, the switches as well. Feel free to go take a look at that. And otherwise, feel free to take a look at the rest of the links in the description down below as well. There's a load of stuff you can check out from Overclock UK affiliate links if you're buying from there. There's also my system, which is listed in the comments as well, and a load of other options, including merch or hoodies or t-shirts like this one. There's also Patreon for access to our Money Men Discord chat, sponsor free videos, and of course you get to support me directly as well. And there will be plenty of other videos, videos on the end cards that you can check out. The obvious one is, is probably already there, so feel free to take a look. But otherwise, thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed it, we'll see you on the next video.